celebrating the baptism of Jesus. Um, we're beginning this time after Epiphany. Epiphany was on Friday, and that's uh, the day we remember the, the wise men coming to visit the baby Jesus. Um, and this time after Epiphany is the shining out of Jesus to all the world. So we are not on Jesus' baptism, but Jesus is baptized when he is 30. So from Friday to today, Jesus went through 30 years. Just keep that in mind. He is now not a child anymore. Just want you to know that. Um, today is also a second Sunday surprise day which is the time we gather uh, after worship uh, intergenerationally to do some thinking about um, and learning about the day and then some crafts. And then there is lunch. Today is a taco bar lunch. There is lots and lots and lots of food. Please, please, please stay. Um, there'll be a free will offering if you can to help defray the cost. And the Education Committee asked me to say there is gluten-free options, there are vegetarian options, whatever your dietary needs, they can, they can cover it. So please stay for that. Um, we're also looking for people to serve on church council. If you would be able to serve the uh, congregation in that way, would you please talk to me sometime soon? Um, we are also going to be getting together a transition team um, as we're working into this transition between pastors. Um, we need to get a team together, about five to seven people. Uh, they will be working to get input from the congregation. Mostly it's, it's three things, past, present, future. Where has Zion been? Where is Zion now? Where does Zion want to go? So we'll be working with that transition team in the next few months. If you or somebody you know, if you know somebody who would be good to serve on that, there are nomination forms out in the back. Um, you can nominate somebody, please ask them first. And the church council will be designating those, that team um, in the next month. Annual meeting is coming up on February 5th. All committee reports are due in the next week. If that's you, please get those in soon. Um, offering envelopes for 2023, if you haven't picked them up, they're out in the narthex. Um, if your name is not there and you want offering envelopes, let us know. If you are now contributing online and don't need offering envelopes, let us know. We need to know those things. And it's a new year, and we are needing volunteers for sign up for various things. So, Usher and Lecter and Coffee, we're going to send around a clipboard with a sign up sheet. If you are interested in doing something new, please sign up. If you are Usher Curious, or lecture curious. You would you maybe would like to, but you're just not quite sure. Put a little question mark after your name, and we will talk to you and make sure you know what you're doing before you get assigned. But we want to get as many people as we can um, and new people doing these things. So please do that if you can. And I don't see any other announcements this morning. So, and, and the clipboards can just go around. You know how to do this. Make sure they get all the way around over to here. Don't start there, go all the way over. Um, don't take them home with you. <laughs> we, we, when they end up over here, just end them over here and we'll, we'll get them. We begin worship today with hymn number six. 73, God is Almighty Word. Please stand as you are able.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot be ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. <coughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The hymn of praise is in the front of your hymnal on page 149.
three things when he got baptized. There was water. Water is good. I like water a lot. Water is in rivers and lakes and all sorts of places. Water is good. So he got water when he was baptized. And then he got God's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Came to him and they said it looked like a but then he also got God's word, God's voice saying, I love you. Yes, yes. So we want to know that every time someone is baptized, whether they are a grown-up or a kid or a baby, they also get those three things. Okay, remember what they were. Water. Water is important. Sometimes it's a river or a lake, but sometimes it's just a bowl like we have over here. That's where we do baptisms. It's in a bowl. It has water in it. We don't have water in it right now. So. And then we get God's Holy Spirit. That means every time we baptize somebody, we remember that God is with us all the time in our hearts and never goes away, forever. And we also get the third thing, God saying, I love you. Because that's what baptism is all about, God saying, I love you. Every time somebody is baptized, maybe you've been baptized, you got all those three things. Those three things. Water, Holy Spirit, God's love. So, today we're going to do a thank you prayer. So, if you can hold hands and close eyes, <coughs> and then we go, oh, and take a deep, slow breath to breathe. Thank you for your love that never, ever goes away, that is with us every time, every day, all the time. Your love that we can never, ever lose. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad you all came up today. Thank you for being here. Bye for now. reading today is from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant who I, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Now, I didn't get any instructions on how to read, <laughs> so listen carefully.
carefully on the instructions for the psalm. I will, I and all the women and girls, young and old, will read the light print. And gentlemen, young and old, you are responsible for the bold print. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord your gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory in God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of the Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forest there, and in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits in the throne above the flood. The Lord sits in the throne and is attained forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. I thank you for doing that with me. Our second reading comes from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Will you stand for the gospel acclamation? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my Son, beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, Remind us every day 
of our baptism into you, of the Holy Spirit that lives with us, and of your voice saying to us that we are your beloved. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Creator and from Jesus the Savior, amen. Years ago now, a young woman showed up at worship one Sunday. Her name wasn't Sheila, but we'll call her that now. She wanted to talk to me about her boyfriend. He was in a local treatment center, and his life had become a mess. He'd been using drugs for years. He drank heavily. Sheila loved him, and she really wanted to see him turn his life around. She asked if I would go see him, and I was able to schedule a visit a couple weeks later. The young man, we'll call him Tristan, talked about his life and about how he really, really wanted this to be a new start. And that's when he asked me about baptism. He had not grown up with anything much in the way of church and had never been baptized. And he believed that baptism would help him, that baptism would give him the fresh start he so desperately needed. We talked a long time. I told him that baptism wasn't magical, it wasn't an internal life insurance policy. It was a way that we remember every day that we are God's beloved. It's always hard to know what people hear. And in most cases like this, I trust the Holy Spirit is at work somehow, somewhere. So a couple months later, Tristan came to church, and he was baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for a while, it seemed like he was going to make it, like he was going to be able to stay clean and sober. He attended AA, he had a sponsor, he came to church about once a month. Sheila was thrilled. And they started talking to me about a wedding. But drugs and alcohol are unforgiving masters. And they do not easily let their slaves go. After a few months, Tristan stopped coming to church altogether. And then so did Sheila. They didn't answer when I would call. I'd call and leave messages. Never heard from them. I heard through the grapevine later that Tristan had been picked up for DWI and that he was in jail. He and Sheila broke up, and I never heard from either of them ever again. I think it's important today talk not only about what baptism is, but what it is not. Tristan thought baptism would keep him clean and sober. Sheila thought baptism would save their relationship. Over the years, I've had lots of parents come to me wanting their child to be baptized so that they would go to heaven when they die. That's what I term the eternal life insurance policy. But none of that is really what baptism is. So we're going to talk a little today about Jesus' baptism in order to understand a little bit better about our own baptism. Jesus' baptism is two things. First, Jesus' baptism is his identity. The voice from heaven made it clear who Jesus is. Jesus is the beloved of God. Jesus is loved. And 
Keep in mind, all of that, that God is pleased with him before he's done anything of importance. Jesus is claimed as God's beloved. No matter what else happened to him, no matter what else he did in life, no matter what others said about him, that one thing never changed. Jesus is God's beloved. And the second thing about Jesus' baptism is that immediately after that, he begins his ministry. Jesus' baptism, baptism then is his commissioning. It's his, I don't know, like, it's like graduation. It's like, okay, now you've got what you need. Go out and do it. Jesus' baptism gave him the strength to get up and do what he needed to do. His baptism by John was where it all started. Nothing before that was really all that noteworthy or important. It's what comes after his baptism. That's when things get interesting. So I wonder, what would it be like if we thought about our baptism in that way, with those two things in mind? That our baptism both tells us who we are and what we're supposed to do. I mean, those are the big questions in life, really, aren't they? Who am I? And why am I here? What, what am I supposed to do? And you know, we live in a world where people are frantically trying to define themselves trying to figure out who they are. They define themselves in terms of teams or celebrities or causes or diets or exercise programs or regions or parties or institutions or wealth or technology. We say things like, well, I love Taylor Swift. Well, I use an iPhone. I'm a Vikings fan. I'm a Republican. I'm a liberal. I'm a country music guy. I eat kale. I'm a gardener. I'm a knitter. It goes on and on and on. We've got all sorts of ways we define who we are. And what I want to suggest is that those are all things that describe us. But they really should not be things that define us. Things that describe us come and go. You may like cable today and not tomorrow. That's okay. That describes you. But what defines you is, is what stays with you from the moment of your birth to the moment of your death. The thing that is with you all your life. No matter what else happens to you, no matter what else you do in life, no matter what anybody says about you, that one thing never changes. You are God's beloved. Always. Always. And just as Jesus was named God's beloved before he ever healed a person, before he ever performed a miracle, before he died on the cross, before he rose from the grave, so you are God's beloved without having to have done a thing. Period. That's the blessing you get. God just loves you. Period. And, and, part two, that your baptism means you've got stuff to do. Jesus had stuff to do after his baptism. Your baptism is like your commissioning. It's like your graduation. It's like your sealed assignment from your commanding officer. Okay, you've, you've been baptized. You are my beloved. Now, let's get busy. These two parts of baptism are interlocked. Because you know you are loved, therefore you know you have God's work to do. God's call to you. So, we're going to do something today to help you remember 
your baptism. And we're going to do it throughout the season, the Sundays in Epiphany, through this season. We're going to start with a call and response. It's very simple. We're going to practice it now. I'm going to say, who are you? And you're going to say, I'm a child of God. And I'm going to say, what does that mean? And you're going to say, God loves me. Really easy. Who are you? I am a child of God. What does that mean? God loves me. Here we go. Who are you? I am a child of God. What does that mean? God loves me. Good. We're going to do it one more time. Who are you? I am a child of God. What does that mean? God loves me. Great. We did well. That's what baptism means. You are a child of God, and God loves you. It's not something magical that means nothing bad is ever going to happen to you again in life. It is going to. That's just what life is. It doesn't mean that you'll never do anything wrong ever again. You will. That's just what it means to be alive. It doesn't mean even that you're always going to be active in a church. You may, you may not. But baptism is much bigger than that. Bigger than any of those things. Baptism is with you every day of your life. Whether you go to church every week or not. Whether you make good choices or not. Whether you remember your prayers at night or not. Every day you are God's beloved. And God loves you. That's the end of it. That's the done deal. So, dear friends, may you always remember that your in your baptism, God called you beloved. And may you always remember that you are a child of God with good work to do. Amen. We sing together hymn number 456, Baptized in Water.
pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith, equip the baptized for your reconciling and redeeming works. Merciful God, Renewing God, you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect, protect oceans and rivers and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands and communities without access to safe water. Merciful God, we see our prayer. Righteous God, you never weary of establishing justice. Increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations. Guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for all those in military service, for peacemakers, and for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, famine. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine. Sustain health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crisis. We pray today especially for Gail and Eileen, for Jim and Gary, for Sharon and Tony, for Tom, Kathy, for all of those on our prayer list and those we name now, either alone or in the quiet of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessing God. In Christ, you gather the beloved community. Kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people. Accompany the newly baptized, those recently ordained, and any beginning a new ministry. Inspire synodical leaders and congregational councils to serve with imagination and wisdom. Merciful God, we see our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Thank you as always for your offerings, for your faithfulness in giving to the mission and ministry of Christ through Zion. Off the plates are located at the back of the church. You can also contribute online. Thank you for your faithfulness in you. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive our offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power. Shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Thank you. 